Hebrews chapter number 4, if you don't mind, and real quickly, we're just going to see uh, verse number 14, uh, 15 and 16. We're really going to preach from verse number 16. And uh, we're going to kind of stay in that. There's going to be a few other verses along the way. But I'm not trying to labor you. I'm not trying to take it and, and just fill you up with a bunch of stuff that you got to sift through. I want to give you just a simple, bare bones facts of what God wants us to do, and that's come boldly for his throne of grace. Yeah. Let us come boldly is what we'll be talking about. The Bible says, verse 15, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, or is at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's what the Bible says here. So let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God says we've got somebody, of course, who understands. And because he understands, because he's had to go through some things, God says, here's what I need you to do. Come boldly. Yeah. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That's what it is, throne of grace. That we may obtain, what, mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Well, I sure hope today you get a hold of this thing here where God says for us to come boldly. Let us come boldly. Let us therefore, of course, he says, come boldly. The therefore is because of what he said to us before that verse. Yeah. And I hope today you'll realize this. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I mean, God is saying, I want you to come. I'm asking you to come. I'm begging you to come. Amen. But so oftentimes people don't come. Father, again, I pray and ask you to help. Please, in Jesus' name, amen. It's not only your outline, but I want you to consider something here. First of all, about this text, I want you to consider it's a text about prayer. God is telling us uh, we can pray. Matter of fact, God is letting us know you should be praying. Yeah. I want you to be praying. So God is letting us know that that that, that we, we need to we need to learn to pray. Now here's the thing about my wife and I were talking about this here. Many times we will we, we'll read the read the scriptures, but when it comes to prayer time. It takes a little bit more because our hearts and our minds have got to be in it. Yeah. 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 And so it's a little bit more difficult for us to do that. And God is saying, I, I want you to understand, this is about prayer. And you need to get your hearts and your mind into your relationship with me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And again, I need you to realize this. God is saying that I want to help you. I want to be your friend. I want to be your comfort. I want to be your help in time of need. Yeah. I want to be all of that. So here's what God is saying. I want you to get to what, what, one of the main things about this text, and that's prayer. How important prayer really is. And not, not only that it's important, but God is saying it needs to become a priority. That's right. It needs to be something that we do uh, on a regular basis. And, and, and But prayer is missing many times. And, and, many, and even those of us that do pray, I love praying, you know I do. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Show the great and mighty days thou knowest not. But sometimes I wonder, do I not spend enough time in that, that, that season of what we call a prayer when I was growing up? Yeah. That's when you just say, okay, I've got to be praying. i got to be praying regularly and i got to be praying often about certain things. Yeah. Sometimes we, we got the habit of prayer, but God is saying, I need you to get real serious about it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And so this text is about prayer. Second thing I want you to get about this, when you look at this thing, God wants us to see this text is about privilege. Privilege. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the fillers of our infirmities. We got somebody on our side. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I can have the privilege to come. We have access to him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 the throne of grace is open up to us. And God is saying, here's the thing. And then again, many people don't take advantage of the privilege that they have. In fact, when he comes to the, to, the, to the armor over in Ephesians chapter number 6, God talks about the sword of the spirit, but he also talks about prayer. Yeah. How are you not going to defend off the old devil if we don't have, again, the sword, the scripture, and a little bit of prayer going on? Yeah. Yeah. We've got we to learn to pray. Amen. Yeah. And God is saying it is a privilege, and it's open to you, but so many people don't take advantage of it. Yeah. If I were to ask again, and I'm not going to have you raise your hand, I don't get you, you hear me say, I don't even want a holy grunt, I don't want you looking around at anybody, but do we really pray? Do we take advantage of the privilege? That's good. And, and please understand, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So, so God said, this is about prayer, but this is also about a privilege. Yeah. But this is also, yeah. it is now about procuring. About, about getting the whole right. stuff. Right. Uh, God is saying, uh, we miss out on so many things. Why? Yes, because we just don't pray. Yep. If, you, if you have not, because you uh -huh. ask not. God said, I want you to be able to procure. I want you to, needs to be met. I want you to understand that the reason why we don't get what we need a lot of times is because we just don't ask for it. Yeah. 
Amen. Yeah. Do this for me. And, and again, we're going to be right back real quickly in, in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter number four. But Matthew chapter seven, if you would please. Matthew seven. I want you to get this down. Prayer, the privilege of procuring. Uh, God is saying, Matthew seven, verse number seven to eleven. Ask. You know the verse now, and it shall and and, 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 and it shall be given you. See, right there, and you shall find. Now, and it shall be open unto you. Here's what God is saying: If you pray, here's the privilege that you get to come, and you can procure what you come on now. Yeah. The verse number eight said, "This is for everyone that asks and receives, and he that seeks and finds it, and to him that knock it, it shall be open." Man, why, why don't we why don't we take advantage of that 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 promise that God has given to us? That's what God is saying. This is about prayer. This is about privilege. This is about procuring. And God is saying, guess what? It's about a promise I'm making to you. If you will ask, if you will seek, if you will not, if ask the God says you will take and receive. You seek the God says you will find it. You knock the God says the door will be open. Man, what kind of better promise do we have than that? Because I love what he says, verse 9. Of what man is there of you? Whom if his son asks bread, he will give him a stone. Oh, or if he would ask a fish, will he give him a servant? Oh, no. God said, not a good father. Come on now. Yeah. Verse number 11. If you then be an evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, yeah. how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, yeah. give good things to them that ask yeah. 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 So God has said, I'm just trying to get you to understand something here. Prayer is your privilege. Yeah. Right. Amen. Prayer is what you can procure from God. And, yeah. and I promise you, if you would do it, God says, you'll get an answer. Right. Yeah. 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 I kind of like that right there. Yeah. I mean, how many of us have asked folks stuff and they, they just ignored us? Right. Well, God said, not me. Yeah. I won't ignore you. Yeah. I, 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 now again, I may not respond how you want to respond when you want. And God said, but guess what? You will get an answer. Yeah. Again, call to me and I will yeah. answer thee. You're going to get something, but God said, it may not be what you want. We'll get to that here in more in a second. So, so here's what I want you to write down on your outline. When it comes to this here, let us come forward. First of all, I want you to understand, and I want you to get a hold of this today. What we're doing is God's sending, uh, he's challenging us. There's a challenge to us. He's challenging us. My question today is this, will you take the challenge? You know, about, hey man, that's not a lot of times folks will say, I challenge you. Oh, 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 I, I, I'm going to take it and, 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 and uh, go up against you. Uh, a lot of times when we talk about a challenge, God said, this ain't going up against anything. This is just you going up against you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, so I challenge you to take it. Get, get over your laziness, God is saying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Get over your lack of. Come on now. Amen. And let's start learning to pray. Amen. I'm challenging you. Not only that, watch this now. Not only is God challenging us when it comes to this text, but God is uh, wanting to change us. Yeah. Wants to change us. And I just hit it again. He said, I want to change you from being this sort of lazy, uh, 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 lack of, uh, uh, a daisical type of an individual when it comes to prayer. Now, listen to me. Now, don't say again. It's hard. The only thing hard about it is we don't want to do it. Yeah. 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 And when I say that, I know it's hard. But let me tell you what I found out. When you want to do it, you'll yeah. you you yeah. take it and yeah. go up against the hard yeah. thing. Right. Right. Hey, When, when a young person wants to play a sport, I don't care how hard it is. I mean, and, and somebody can tell me, you're not going to ever make the team. I'll prove it to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes young people, you, you, you tell them, say, I need you to start getting up in the morning. Come on. I just can't get up. I, I was up, stayed up too late all last night and stuff like that. Well, in the morning we leave in here at 4 o'clock, we're going to Disney. 3 o'clock, they're knocking on the door. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, come on now. Yeah. Again, I say it again because yeah. the message what came out. Somebody like telling you to go to them, I'm telling you not to go to them. I'm going to tell you any of that. I'm telling you to take a walk with God. He'll tell you whether or not to go, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing is, God is saying, that's, I'm, it's a challenge to us. It's, it's yeah. to change us. Yeah. But here's the one good thing I like about what God's doing today. God says, I want you to comfort you. Comfort us. <laughs> That's what this, this text is all about, comforting us. Mm. So, so if we're not finding any comfort in prayer, it's because the fact of the matter is, let me just be honest with you here, we're just kind of going through the motions. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because when I understand prayer, man, it takes on a whole new outlook. Amen. Amen. I mean, I start realizing I got somebody on my side who can do it 
exceedingly abundantly above yeah. all we ask for yeah. 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 Praise God. I'm so glad that there's a thing that I got taught long ago, and that was about prayer. I'm so glad I got I learned about prayer. My mama taught me about prayer. I tried to bring prayer into my relationship with my wife. I want my kids to learn how to fast and pray. But they were growing up again. And I know they didn't think it was it was all that important. But again, the same thing, mom and dad, by the way, let me just share something with you. Your parents need to stop trying to figure out how to do stuff different from your parents that worked. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Pray. Amen. 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 See, see, again, mom and daddy taught us to fast and pray. They sent us to school fasting and praying. Right. Well. Oh, that's that, that, that's just wicked, preacher. It didn't kill me. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, they should have helped me do a little more fasting. Right? Yeah. 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 So I used to have my kids. When it, I, let's learn to fast and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do this thing here. And I can see them going around the house. <sighs> and they bothered me because I did the same thing and they didn't feed me either. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. But I learned how to pray. Yeah. I learned how to get a hold of God. Right. I learned how to ask God for things in my life that when, when I, I didn't know have any other way. And I, God said, you can do that. Amen. Amen. And so, so I want you to get a hold of some things here. First of all, and I, I want you to write down on your outline. You got it now. Number one, two, and three. Real right. quick. And it's real quick. First of all, is the privilege allowed? Mm -hmm. The privilege allowed. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16 says this here. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Yes, right. Amen. Let this the privilege allowed. Yes. You say, preach, what do you mean by the privilege of now? It is a privilege that God has allowed us yeah. to come Amen. to his throne of grace. Amen. 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 I want you to get, this is so simple, but I need you to get a hold of this here. This privilege that has been allowed, uh, God is saying here, you can come. Right. Yeah. Now, please, I hope yeah. you got it. Yeah. You can come. What a privilege it is to carry yeah. everything to God yeah. in prayer. Yeah. You can come. Come. You yeah. say, preacher, well, help me with that. Well, 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 how is it that we can come? You can come because God said you can come. Yeah. Yeah. Real simple. You can come because God said you can come. Yeah. There's a whole lot of people in the world that are telling you what you can't do. Yeah. Let me tell you something here. When it comes to prayer, I don't care what they say about yeah. prayer. Yeah. You can take and pray in silence. You can pray out loud. You can pray on a street. You yeah. can pray in your bedroom. You can yeah. pray to pray. You can pray about anything else because God said we can come. Amen. Amen. God said I can pray. <laughs> and then you got to understand something here. You, you should never be too busy to pray. That's right. Or you should never be so occupied with what's going on in your life that you don't learn how to pray. Amen. We got the privilege that's been allowed to us. Come boldly, God says. Why should we come boldly? Because God says you can. Amen. God says I can. Right. Well, here's the thing I want you to understand. When God gives us this portion of Scripture, are you still with me? Amen. Really what we're doing is the privilege allowed. Why can't we come to God? Because God said we can. Amen. Why can't we come to God? The privilege allowed. Because God has said, get this here. I'm really telling you to come. Yep. Yeah. I can come, and I'm commanded to come. Amen. Right. May not always pray. Yeah. Yeah. Think, listen to me now. Brother, brother, brother Mike Short, please get a hold of this. I read that, and I read this right here. And this is something I finally figured out. I mean, I really I finally figured this out. Let us therefore come boldly. Here's what God is basically saying. I'm not making this an option. That's right. right. Good. That's what we almost look at it as. Yeah. It's an option. This is something that if I don't want to do it, it should be okay. God said, no. I want to hear from you. I'm telling you to come talk to me. Come on now. Amen. Call unto me. That's not an option. Right. Yeah. Now I know you say, well, preacher, I don't have to. And God has said, okay, you're right. You don't have to. But do you see what you're missing out on? Do you understand yeah. that I'm not happy when you don't come to me? Yeah. We go to everybody else. And we go for everything, for to everybody else. And God is saying, please get a hold of this. Come boldly. Come boldly. Yeah. Come to me. Amen. That's what happens. We don't come. So we don't follow what God has told us to do. Write this down. You, you, I hope you get a hold of this. I want us to be changed while we're being challenged. Right. But also be comforted. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Get a hold of this here. If we don't follow and do what God tells us to do, have you ever thought about this here? If we don't pray, we've been disobedient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Samuel right. said it when it came to Saul, God forbid that I should cease to pray. No. We'll be disobedient when we don't pray. Right. 
So let me ask you a question here today. Don't raise your hand, no more other grunts. How many of us are disobedient today? Mm. How many of us in society are not going to do it? Matter of fact, how many of us are going to go to bed and still be disobedient? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, let me just stop for a moment here. I want your parents to help me with this one now. How many of you are going to let your kids go to bed knowing they've been disobedient to you and almost look at you in the face and say, what you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Don't reach over back at them now. Give them a chance to pray. <laughs> Aren't you glad God does that with us? Yeah. yeah. Most of us are obedient to God. Yeah. And again, I, I, I know, we, we, we act as if, okay, it, it should be no big deal. Here's the other thing. Not only disobedience, but denying God an opportunity to work in our lives. Uh, well, God tells us to come to Him and talk to Him and let Him know what's aching our hearts right now. God is saying, I want to show you what I can do. Wait a minute. Look at it again here. Come boldly for, unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Who's going to do all that for us? God is. And God said, like, well, you don't come to me. You deny me the opportunity yeah. to be a blessing to you. Now, hold on this here. Why don't we come to God? Some of us doubt that he can really do anything. Yeah. God. I know you want me to do it, but I just doubt if it really works. Wow. Can I ask you a question? Are we that way with God? So, so the, the privilege that's allowed, God says, come, why? Because you can. Come, why? Because I'm really commanding it. Come, why? Because you should crave it. Wow. This should be something that's, I mean, that's like, I want this. I need this. I got to do this. What's that? Pray. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you a question? How many of us really say praying is not something? I delight in. It's just, it, Man. God, it's just, it's just too much work. Mm. God, I got to get up earlier before I go to work or before I go to school. Say, so, preacher, can't you pray in the evening? Why, why would you take it? I'm just be honest with you. Yeah. Why do you wait till the end of the day to ask God to get involved with you? Yeah. 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 You mean tell me you didn't need him up until it got time to go to sleep? I know, because all you need him now is to keep you breathing through the night. Yeah. You need him to keep you breathing through the night. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is it? God said, it's the privilege allowed, but many people don't come. Why? Because they don't take advantage of what they can do. They don't take advantage of what God has commanded because he wants to help. And there's no craving. No, then by the way, don't say you don't crave stuff. We got ready to come back over here. My wife said, uh, what you want me to fix for you? I always go home after church, take care of my lunch and stuff. What you want me to fix for you? I said, nothing. You got to eat something. I said, where's my phone at? She says, uh, uh, she went out to look in the car and told her I had left there. Came back in, it was, it was right there in the kitchen counter. She my phone. She says, right here, I'm right by. What you want? I said, Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for Pizza Hut for two days. <laughs> I got it time. Right? I got it time. If I order Pizza Hut at my house and then finish changing my shirt and uh, and, and all the things that, to get dry again, I, I, it takes 15 minutes for my meat lover's milk to be made. Woo! Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I've been waiting two days to get it. Now, so, listen to me now. Some of us need to just be honest and say, yeah. I have that kind of craving for a lot of material stuff. Yeah. When it comes to spiritual things, the privilege allowed. Let me go to the number two. Are you still with me? Yes, yeah. sir. The place affirmed. The throne of grace. Real quickly, and I'm not going to get labor. I'm supposed to even stay there on that long, but I want you to write down a couple of things about the place of firm. When it comes to the place of firm, I want you to really get this down here. It's the throne of grace. We found out who was sitting on that throne of grace. It's our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we have a person that we're going to. We're not just going to anybody. That's why in Matthew 11, 28, he says, come unto me. Come unto me. Me, not come unto your buddy, not come unto your friend, not even come to your mom and your daddy and your husband and your wife. Come unto me. Yeah. So God said, here's the place of firm. The person is sitting on the throne. And watch this now. What good is the person sitting on the throne if you don't have power to do something from the throne? Come on now. Yeah, you hear what I just said? Yeah. What good 
judgment of somebody to be sitting on a throne. You have no power to do something from that throne. Amen. 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 God just said here, if you come to me, the one sitting on the throne, the one who, who, which is the throne of grace, again, God is the one there. We come to his throne room, to his presence, to yes. his place. Amen. Amen. And God is saying, when you come to me, please understand something. I've got all power. Amen. Amen. Not just some power, not yeah. a little power, not most of the power.
But some of us like, well, God's looking over there. God says, no, I'm not. I put it in the book for a reason. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let me move on. So we're still okay. Yeah. So we got there, the privilege allowed. And then next thing we have is the place confirmed. That's the throne of grace. And then the last one is the product assured. The product assured. Look what he says here. Yeah, I, I thank God this is all in this one verse. And there's so much more if we, if we do a context and do even more that God help us with here, especially with his high priest. He says in verse number 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, get this down, the product assured, that we may obtain, what's that, mercy? Yeah. And find grace to help when in time of need. Yeah. Are you still with me saying that? Yeah. Man, I like that right there. Here's what God says to us, Brother Bob and Miss Greedy. God says here, the product assured is a total of what you need. Yeah. Sometimes we need some mercy from God. Sometimes we need some yeah. grace from God. But God says you can get the whole package. Amen. 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 Please get a hold of this here. In the Psalm 136 and the other Psalms also. But in that Psalm alone, it talks about his mercy endured forever 26 times. Yeah. God says, you got the total, come on now. Yeah. You got everything, you know, all the mercy that you need. Yeah. The mercy that's due every morning, amen. Yeah. amen. God says, but you got to come to the throne, the grace, so you can obtain that mercy, yeah. so you can get some of that mercy. God says, I want to give you mercy, but not only that, I want to give you grace to hell. Amen. To live the life and to be what you're supposed to do. Come on, help me. Now, yeah. I can't do what I'm supposed to do without God. And God said, a lot of times, all we do, and we just come to God and say, give me this and give me that and give me this and give me that. And God says, you want to know what you need also? Some mercy and some grace to help you to be the Christian you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And watch the hold of this now. I want to get this now. You get the total package, and then God says, there's no time limit on the product. Come on, help me. Yeah. Yeah. There's no time limit on the product. What do you mean? You get that grace to help in time of need. Somebody say amen. Yeah. There's no expiration on the needs that God has for you. Yeah. And God said, don't just come in an emergency, but come excited on a regular basis, and you can get what you need when you come, and you don't have to wait any longer. Amen. Yeah. I don't know how many of you use razor blades still. I use razor blades, and I use two different types. And, um, and, and when I get them, I want to get them on sale. Amen. Razor blades cost too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really, really do. Yeah. Somebody said, well, preacher, you need to just stop shaving. I tried that. It just don't. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with my hair. Yeah. I get my hair cut once a week, brother. I need it or not. Because yeah. if I wait one week and another day, I'm you, I am frustrated all day when I get another haircut. Yeah. But I want to get stuff on sale. So I went into Walmart. And I saw the blades that I wanted, and they had these coupons right there. You know how to get a, 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 so much off immediately? Yeah. And it was $5 off. I said, man, $5 off, these blades cost quite, quite a bit. It was like $20 a pack. $5 off, that's going to take you down to 15 So I told them, I want every one of those up there that's got $5 off back. Coupons. Someone gave them to me. I went to the counter. Rang them up, twenty dollars. I'm waiting for my five. I'm going to like this. I put the first one on there. It said expired. Whoa. I opened them all up. They all. I mean, this is just last week. Yeah. Last week, as we get into July, get into August, they expired. March. Still on sale. Yeah. Wow. So I said, hey, if it's on the shelf, isn't it still good? Mm -hmm. She said, mm -hmm. I said, why? Come on. I said, it's supposed to be still good on the shelf. She said, mm -hmm. I said, can somebody help me? She said, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. Can on. you know help? So I said, well, take them all back. Yep. I need it. Those razor blades. I'm so glad God don't do me that way. Yeah. 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 
God said, we'll give you what you need. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be on time. Amen. And no expiration date yeah. come out of you. Yeah. Come on, help me. Yeah. God is not going to say, well, you know what? You waited too long. Well, you know what? I'm just closed for business today. I'm getting ready to take a vacation. I'm going to go to the tabernacle. No, thank God. You have it every time I need him. Amen. Yeah. The problem today is this, yeah. is that we don't go to him. And God is saying, right. I'm not sleep and let the rest of us enjoy this. <laughs> that was right. I got some negative. Can we understand the Bible? There's another side of coins and stuff all the time. But I'll tell you something. I like this heads up coin right now. Amen. 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 What God is saying. Why don't you come? Yeah. Why don't you come? The product is assured. Yeah. Here's what I learned there, Brother Christopher. That God, this me now, ain't Walmart. <laughs> Listen, not only does God not operate with expired coupons, but God never runs out of what you need on the shelf.